This is Colin Cattell with Palisade Radio. Back on the show with us today is Bill Holter of MilesFranklin.com. Welcome back on the program, Bill. Good morning, Colin. My pleasure. Yesterday marked the end of the two-day Federal Reserve meeting, and the Federal Reserve has been beating around the bush for several years now. You're not a person that ever beats around the bush, so I wanted to get your opinion on what the significance of the meeting was yesterday. Well, the only thing they did was drop the word patient. All they can do is jawbone at this point because they've locked themselves in with 0% interest rates. They really can't. They can't go lower. I mean, there are countries in the world that have negative rates, but you, you, I mean, negative rates are ridiculous and you cannot have that for the reserve currency. Now they've been talking about green shoots and recovery, recovery, recovery. Uh, we're obviously have not seen any type of expansion and their only, their only option is either to keep printing more or actually tightening and they can't tighten. There's just, there's absolutely no way. You've got an overleveraged system, financial system, and you have an economy, not just in the U.S., you've got a global economy now that is turning down and is at recession levels. So withdrawing liquidity from the system or raising interest rates will end up in a deflationary smoking black hole. Well, why at this point does the Federal Reserve need to tighten policy? Of course, the dollar's already surging, which it would make me believe if we did tighten, the dollar would continue to appreciate against a foreign basket of currencies. The Dow is in a seven-year bull market now. Why not just leave policy as is? Well, they, they actually, it's from a credibility standpoint, because they've been, they've been crying wolf since early 2010. That the economy's turning in a recovery on a growth path, and every single Fed meeting, a tightening has been put off. But the credibility problem is is when? When are they going to do this? Uh, they they painted themselves in a corner where you can only cry wolf for so long. And what they're saying is, well, we can tighten, but it won't it won't harm the economy. It won't harm the markets. That's dead wrong. They know it's dead wrong, and they cannot tighten. I'm going to say that the Fed's next major program or, or change is going to be QE4. It's not going to be a tightening. They may tighten one time, but within two weeks, you're going to see the markets implode. Yeah, and I think that the markets acted very interestingly yesterday before the announcement of the Fed meeting. The market was tanking, and then all of a sudden, the market shot up. And I guess that reflected the fact that the Federal Reserve still did not give the market an answer as to when the tightening is going to happen. That's correct. And if you watched afterwards, Yellen was, was if you want to call it hinting, at September rather than June. So they kicked the can another three months. And now I saw that you predicted in an article that you wrote in the last couple of days that there will indeed be a QE4. This is something that a lot of people have been saying for a while. Do you have any indication or thought as to how long it's going to take before this could start up? Or is it going to be in response to an emergency situation that they trip off? It's always a response. Every, every QE was a response to the markets. If you go back and look at a chart and the timeline on the charts of of the stock markets, uh, every QE was kicked off as the markets were rolling over. I want to touch on gold real quick. We have a big topic to talk about near the end of the interview, but there's been gold bull rallies that have tried to start. And every time that they've started to get going, the Dow and the general equities have charged forward. And I think that that has taken, taken the fuel away from that bull market in gold. Do you think that we need to have stock market weakness, the Dow needs to fall off or the dollar needs to fall off before gold can re-enter this bull market in earnest? Uh, I don't think you're going to see a a bull market in earnest. I, I really think that you're going to see something akin to a light switch being flipped on or off. And I think that switch basically is gold supply. I think this, I think gold will be marked up and the system will, the financial system will go into a, into a seizure once China is not delivered on. China has taken up 80 to 90 percent of global production. It has to be coming from somewhere, and that somewhere is not a bottomless pit. 
Now, when that when the gold runs out and the Chinese are not delivered upon and they cannot exchange dollars for gold, that's it. That's your light switch. And so an example scenario of that from the public point of view might be waking up one day and China announcing that they've ended up accumulating 10,000 tons of gold. Is that kind of the idea you have in mind? Well, you may see a few days of 50 or or $100 moves upward, and then all of a sudden China comes out. Uh, they may or may not say that we've not been delivered on, but I, I think they could step up and they could I mean, pick a number. They could use 2,500, 4,000, 10,000, who knows? But they could step up and say, we, will, we bid $4,000 an ounce for any and all gold anyone wants to sell. Now, what's the price of gold? What's the new price of gold? It's $4,000. It doesn't matter what Comex fantasy land says it is. The price of gold basically will be what the Chinese say it is. On the topic of China, there's a very big piece of news that you've been talking about, but of course the Western media has not, and that's called the China-led Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, which we can call AIIB. And the big news is that on March 12th, Britain announced it had submitted an application to become a founding member of this bank. They're also joining France, Germany, and Italy. There's a couple curious points about this. One is that China had dictated that this was only for regional Eastern members at first, but it makes sense for them to probably accept somebody like Britain into the bank. The second interesting thing is that the United States has been expending considerable resources lobbying Australia, South Korea, and Britain not to join the bank. So what's this bank all about, and what do you think the implications are? Well, the implications are our allies are... are Switching teams, they want to say. Uh, they're, they're jumping on board with the winner. Australia did, uh, has applied, by the way. So they, they have also joined in. Uh, the U.S. threw a fit last Friday, I believe it was, because of the news on Thursday that Britain applied. And then I think it was Friday or Saturday, the announcement of uh, Germany, France, and Italy. And I think it was Monday that Australia joined. This is basically uh, a competitor to the World Bank, which is, of course, uh, if you want to call it a minion of the U.S. I mean, the U.S. Uh, has been the main member all the way back 50 years ago. So these countries joining into a, a, an Asian but Chinese-led bank is a slap in the face to the U.S., and it is certainly a departure and will undermine the power of the World Bank. Eventually, in my opinion, it will make the world it'll make the World Bank uh, an unimportant and an unimportant entity. This represents almost a paradigm shift if it's effective, because the United States, as you mentioned, has used the World Bank as a tool to control countries around the world. There's no better way to control a country than providing them an amount of debt they can never repay, right? So if China is successful in this, it could lend a lot of power to the East. I know that there's been a couple other developments I believe you've written about, one of them being the new standard that's going to compete with SWIFT, the SWIFT banking system. Russia has a system there that they're joining along with China. What's going on on that end? Uh Backing up just just a second, this uh, you mentioned SWIFT. I believe it was late last week. The U.S. had been lobbying to kick Russia out of the SWIFT system, and they had a vote. And SWIFT actually gave Russia a seat, one of their 25 board member seats. So not only did they not get kicked out, they have a they have a seat on the board now. Uh, the biggest thing. To all of this, to the AIIB bank, this new SWIFT system, the key is they're not going to be using dollars. Anybody who reads your work knows your philosophy, your, your investment philosophy. But for our listeners, you're painting a pretty dire situation. There could very literally be a light switch situation. And you've said in the past, either you're in the trade or you're not, because once you wake up and prices have changed dramatically, it's too late. You can't call your broker. You can't get a hold of that gold. What are you doing to protect yourself? Are you 100% behind gold and how are you allocating yourself? I have enough cash to live on and I own gold, silver, uh, miners in every way, shape, or form, and I have uh, metal stored offshore in 
three separate non-bank vault locations. And I own my and and for the miners that I have, I hold those certificates because, in my opinion, when this thing turns upside down, you're going to see market closures. You're also going to see bankruptcies amongst banks and brokers. Now, if your broker is holding your certificates and they go upside down, how are you going to get access to sell a certificate? Right. So you've taken everything into your control. You've diversified yourself internationally with your gold storage. I'm sure you're probably protected on the home front as well, but we can keep that private. I have lead for that. <laughs> Good. Firm believer in Jim Sinclair's gots get out of the system. Yeah, and that's becoming more and more difficult to do every day. I mean, we're recording this interview on Skype, and that's recording us in more ways than we probably know. So, Bill, on that note, thanks so much for rejoining us. For listeners to get on your free list, I get an email every single day with your writing and a couple guys who work with you. How do listeners go ahead and get on that list? You can go to www.milesfranklin.com. There's an icon there to put your name on our uh, free mailing list. And we usually have two, sometimes three articles a day that we send out that we write. And, of course, we link to, to other articles that we think are of interest. All right, Bill, thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure, Colin. Thank you. think you understand the junior mining sector and you think that the participants in the mining sector, junior mining sector, are good people and kind people, hit the bid. And the world is always going to need raw material. It's going to need copper and gold and nickel and so forth. Totally destabilized. Hey, hey, troll, did you hear what's going on in Yemen? Are you too stupid?